As Allied forces fought their way up through Italy on the way to Rome, they encountered heavily fortified German positions on the Gustav Line. One disastrous stumbling block was an ancient hilltop monastery called Monte Cassino. The resulting carnage made this a brutal engagement no soldier would ever forget. Al Dietrich was with the 36th Texas Division. It was on this Italian hillside that he met the enemy on the battlefront. September 3, 1943, as Allied armies complete their conquest of Sicily, they prepare to invade Italy itself. Two divisions of the British 8th Army cross to the southern tip of Italy, where they encounter only minor German resistance. That same day, the Italian government surrenders. On September 9th, the 5th Army, composed of three American and three British divisions, launches an amphibious assault on the west coast of Italy at Salerno Bay, 30 miles south of Naples. One of the soldiers in combat for the first time with the 36th Texas Division is Al Dietrich. The invasion at Salerno Bay on September the 9th was, I imagine, like any other invasion, but we did not know what to anticipate. We knew we were going into combat, but what was combat? We had no idea, really. We had been conditioned to peak, and we were ready to go. Any more training, we would have been overtrained. So we were ready. I, uh, I knew I was going to go into combat now, and uh, this was going to be the beginning of the end of the war. For nearly a week, the Allies are surrounded by the Germans. However, the U.S. sends in air power and combined with the big guns of the British Navy, they break out of the stranglehold. We had not been on shore hardly an hour when we heard the thunder of tanks. October 1st, the 5th Army marches victoriously into the city of Naples. It is an important strategic point because it will provide a perfect port for landing men and supplies once it is cleared of the destruction left behind by the Germans. There is confidence that the Allies will get to Rome within two months. However, the Germans mobilize all their units in Italy. They must be ready to counteract any Allied breakthrough. When the Allies invaded Italy, Adolf Hitler thought at first of uh, withdrawing all the German troops in southern Italy to the north. But uh, Kesselring, who was the uh, commander-in-chief in Italy, uh, talked him into letting him retreat slowly. Kesselring was successful in keeping the Allies to a very slow advance. Under Field Marshal Albert Kesselring's plan, the Germans are to make the Allied advance as costly as possible. Risking only small forces, they take hilltop positions in the Italian countryside. From these strongholds, they are able to strafe their attackers with impunity. When their own positions are seriously threatened, they simply withdraw a mile or two and repeat the process. They are always protected by the terrain, while the Allies are in the open, where they are hit over and over again. his own battle. There's a war out there and there's a battlefront. Your unit is committed, but you as an individual are committed and you are going to encounter a enemy right in front of you and that's what happened to me. October 1943. The Allies are meeting progressively stiffer resistance in their push into the heart of Italy. The German withdrawal is not going to be a simple retreat. As they leave a position, engineers and labor battalions are building a strong defense barrier, which becomes known as the Gustav Line. 
The only thing in the Allies' favor is a strong and aggressive air force. But in mid-November, cold rain and even snow begins to fall. With these inclement flying conditions, the Air Force is of little help. Even on the ground, American tanks get bogged down in the mud. Before they even encounter the Gustav Line, the Allies recognize the slowing momentum and pause for some rest and regrouping. With Rome still 90 miles away and progress at a halt, none of the troops believe they will be in the Eternal City within two months. Meanwhile, everyone suffers from the conditions. The Leary Valley is the most critical defensive position on the Gustav Line. Monte Cassino, an 1,100-foot peak, guards the entrance to the best approach to Rome through this valley. They had labor battalions that used to prepare defense positions if the Germans had to fall back to them. We didn't have that, but then again, we never really fell back. The Germans have placed large guns inside natural and man-made caves and have well-protected machine gun nests all over the mountain. Everywhere else, the slopes are lined with miles of barbed wire and thousands of anti-personnel mines. The most difficult issue for the Allies is the presence of an historic monastery sitting on top of the mountain. This site, holy to Christians all over the world, is where St. Benedict founded the Benedictine Order of Monks in the 6th century. If the Allies damage or destroy the structure in the heat of battle, they risk offending a large part of the religious world. December 1st, the move forward resumes. The 5th Army launches an attack on its next objective, a group of hills behind Monte Cassino. The key to this range is Monte Camino. In a major assault, nearly 1,000 big guns direct their fire on this hillside. The idea of the Germans being on the high points on the mountains in this terrible terrain meant that they could see the approaches and there are few places in Italy where an army can advance and since the Germans could see those very clearly it was very easy for them to block those routes of advance. And so Monte Cassino uh, was very important to the Germans.